What's up everyone? Welcome once again to the channel. It's your boy Luis and today I'm going to be sharing with you all my thoughts leading to the preliminary competition of Miss Universe 2024. Now, there is not a lot of time. The preliminaries will take place in approximately four or five hours. I am attending in person, so out of those four or five hours, I need to take at least one to prepare and one to get there. So what I'm trying to say is that I don't have extensive time to film this video, edit it, overproduce it, and deliver the type of videos that usually you get here on my channel. So instead, I decided to just sit down and share with you guys my raw thoughts about what I think should happen tonight, or at least what we can expect. I'm going to talk about some of the delegates, um, but you will see it's not my traditional topics. Uh, instead, I will split this video into three different sections that I will tell you about in just a moment. So the reason why I'm doing this is because this year, I mean, it is no secret, we have 127 delegates at Miss Universe. That is not only groundbreaking, um, first time in history that Miss Universe has so many delegates, but also it is challenging for the candidates, simply because how do you manage to stand out? How do you manage to get the spotlight put on you when you are competing against 126 other women. Um, from what I've heard, the uh, preliminary competition should only be around three hours, and there are three different segments. The, uh, we have the national costume portion, which is not scored towards finals, so that's already at least a relief. We have the swimsuit competition, and then we have the evening gown competition, meaning that every single one of these um, segments will get probably one hour airtime. When you divide that by 127, every contestant will get roughly, roughly 20 seconds on stage. Um, so, as I told you, I wanted to split this video into different sections and talk about different candidates that belong in those sections. The first uh, section is um, the candidates who can use the preliminary as a, as, a, as a way to regain their momentum. Secondly, the candidates who can use this moment to prove them wrong them being the fans or the bashers or the doubters, you name it. And um, last but not least, those who um, are putting everything at stake during prelims. So for every single one of those sections, I will be going in and giving you some examples. Uh, let's start with the first one. As I mentioned, the candidates who should use this moment to regain their momentum. It is no secret, since the beginning of Miss Universe season, and I'm not even talking about international season, but at a national level, we always have our favorites, right? Contestants that manage to stand out from the very beginning, whether it is because of their beauty, their performance skills, their personalities, communication skills, you name it, right? I think that we can all remember who our early favorites were. Personally, I even made a video, maybe even two videos here on my channel where I was talking about my early favorites from Miss Universe. Well, the reality is that those early favorites don't always remain favorites. Sometimes um, they gain a lot of momentum prior to the competition, and once the competition starts, they tend to fade a little bit into the background. That doesn't mean that they completely lose the spotlight or the attention, but they don't have that um, front runner position that once they had. Some of the contestants that I would like to highlight in this particular category will be uh, Finland. I feel like Finland had a stellar beginning of the Miss Universe season, getting the spotlight put on her and being highlighted as one of those women that, you know, coming from a European country, is able to perform, who has a very um, aspirational type of beauty, um, and that overall it was just like a very solid package. I think that she still is, but um, now that the comp competition is ongoing, I feel like she has struggled a little bit to maintain that momentum, especially with some of the looks. I feel like she has been getting some criticism on that end. Uh, I would also go ahead and pitch in Zimbabwe. And I'm gonna tell you, I kind of disagree with this one. I disagree myself because Zimbabwe, I mean, just like everyone on this particular uh, segment, gained a lot of momentum, a lot of people supporting her and uh, seeing the vision for her as a, a potential Miss Universe winner. Um, but I feel like once the competition started, I haven't been seeing as much of her. For some reason, 
uh, she's not being featured as much. And as I told you, I heavily disagree with, with this because up until now, I still feel like she has that wow factor to be a potential winner. So I really don't understand where the disconnect is. This woman uh, has the beauty, she has the performance skills, uh, she has the looks, the fashion, everything. So um, I don't really understand the uh, disconnect over there. I would also mention in the same category, Miss Universe Chile. Um, it is no secret, go to any pageant page where they're doing leaderboards or go to Facebook, Miss Sociology, or any of the you know big portals. You will see that there is a very solid fan base for Miss Universe Chile this year. And very fairly, she is beautiful. Uh, she is a performer. I think that she has that wow factor that sometimes it's a little bit over the top. Uh, borderline a little bit grand, but uh, still is something that she can fine tune in order to fit the mold of Miss Universe. Um, I think that the competition is so fierce this year that although she has a very solid uh, support system in her country, she could use this momentum in preliminaries to prove that she is truly deserving of that of that hype, of all the buzz that she has been receiving. So this is a great opportunity for her. Same thing for Miss Puerto Rico. I mean, Boricuas, we know they're really strong in pageantry. Um, some of the best trained countries and contestants, um, you know, out there. Um, but again, it's challenging because the girl is beautiful and all. She has a very interesting story. She is a mother, but there are so many mothers this year in the competition and everyone is beautiful. So truly, Puerto Rico should use this moment in order to maximize her visibility and make sure that going into finals, she will get that spotlight put on her. I have no doubt in my heart that she will make uh, the first cut during finals and then she can take it from there, of course. She could end in the top 12, she could end top five, we never know, but it's important that she reclaims uh, her momentum and her spotlight during the preliminary competition. Last but not least, in this category, I would like to go ahead and include Miss Universe Cuba who represents my uh, birth country. We all know that there was huge buzz about Miss Universe Cuba this year simply because she, I mean, our country hasn't competed at Miss Universe in over 57 years. So uh, choosing a delegate this year, sending, the, sending her to Miss Universe, it is indeed a huge deal for us. Um, and I think that the girl has managed to do very well in the competition. In the early days, I feel like she was getting a little bit more coverage, a little bit more of the spotlight. Um, now that the competition is a little bit more, you know, we're further into the competition, all of that attention has faded a little bit. And one thing that I will say about Miss Cuba, which is also true for all of the delegates, not just in this category, for, but for everyone else as well, is that there haven't been many opportunities for us to get to know the girls. There ha we haven't had many activities. The girls spent most of their time at the hotel. So it's hard to really um, highlight them when they're just staying at the hotel, right? But anyways, I feel like now this is her moment after having such a phenomenal start with a lot of the spotlight put on her. Now going into preliminaries, it's her moment to reclaim that momentum, right? So let me know if you agree with those girls in the comment section down below. Um, now I'm gonna move on to the next segment, that, which is uh, the candidates who should use this moment to prove them wrong. Now, you know, preliminary competition is a big deal. The preliminary decides basically who makes the first cut during finals. Um, for those of you who are not so familiar with pageantry, you know, finals has like the opening number, the introduction round, and all of that is very nice, it's very cute. That is only for show. That is not really evaluated, it's not scored. So if you make the top 30 during finals, it's all because of your preliminary uh, performance alongside your closed door interview. And, you know, this year we have a fair amount of girls that I believe um, have been showcasing a lot of potential. However, there's a certain part of the fandom um, or the supporters, pageant fans, whatever you want to call them, that don't really see it for them. Um, some of these girls are known as dark horses. Some of them might be front runners, but they might still have, you know, a lot of doubters. So let's talk about them a little bit. I, I will mention, I will highlight some of the girls that I included in my last video about the dark horses of the competition. So I talked about Brazil, which was my number one dark horse in the competition. Uh, same thing as uh, Namibia. I feel like for the most part, 
I mean, they're very different, right? As I said, Namibia is a country that offers um, a lot of quality in terms of the candidates that they send internationally. They really prepare, they really bring their A game. However, because there is really no such factor in Namibia, the candidates often tend to be overlooked. I mean, as far as I can think, the only time that I remember Namibia winning an international pageant was with Miss uh, Supernational a couple of years ago. Other than that, I'm not sure if they have won other international pageants. Uh, maybe, maybe they have. I don't know. I just need to do my research on that. But the point is that they do send really, really strong delegates um, that often get overlooked. Well, prelims is the perfect occasion for her to show that potential, uh, those uh, performance skills, those uh, walk skills, um, because for a moment, whether it is 15 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, she will have the stage for herself. So regardless of whatever such factor, whatever name of the country she's carrying, she will have the camera and all of the attentions of the fans on her. So she really needs to maximize that moment in order to make the most out of it. Same thing for Brazil. I feel like there is a little bit more support and overall acceptance of, of Brazil as a contestant this year. However, she's been getting a lot of backlash in terms of the styling being often compared to Shanice Palacios, who is our reigning Miss Universe. Um, so my only hope for preliminaries when it comes to Brazil is that she will be a little bit bolder and shall we, she will take a risk when it comes to the fashion um, so that she is able to stand out. Basically, what I'm trying to say is this is her opportunity to shut down those comments and those comparisons saying that she is not able to uh, have her own identity or her own look, that she's trying to mimic what the former or the previous winner did. Um, so I think this is really an opportunity, really a chance for her to prove everyone wrong. All right, I have here on my list as well, um, Miss Universe Nigeria. Uh, I mean, there has been extensive controversy about Miss Universe Nigeria. We all know the ins and outs and what happened with Miss South Africa and all of those things. But it is undeniable that Miss Universe Nigeria has the beauty, right? We, um, based on what I've seen, she does have technical skills that she can perform. But this time around, it is really her time to prove everyone wrong. I mean, there were so many comments about her joining Miss Universe Nigeria and ultimately winning that competition after the initial batch of contestants were already halfway through, right? Um, so there were so many comments saying that she was not deserving, that, you know, the competition was rigged, that she should have waited. Well, this is the perfect, uh, the perfect moment for Miss Universe Nigeria to step on that stage and prove that she earned that crown, that national title, fair and square. Um, of course, even I said in one of my videos that the timing was a little bit off, but ultimately, you know, any national director in any country, uh, what they want is to have a representative that will put the best foot forward at the international competition and have as much as possible, um, you know, the best chances of winning the international crown for the country. So I hope that uh, Chidi is able to do that. I mean, this is truly her time to shine. Um, I want to talk about Philippines and India, but before I get into those, I will put um, kind of like in the same box, Paraguay and Russia. I have talked about Paraguay here on the channel a couple of times. I haven't really talked about Russia as much, but I feel like both of them are showcasing a lot of potential that at the moment is still peaking. These girls haven't reached the maximum potential yet. However, we see that the trend is going upwards. So um, this particular moment in the preliminary competition is a golden opportunity to prove all of those people that might overlook them or maybe who think that, oh, they're pretty, but can they really perform? Can they really deliver? This is the perfect opportunity to prove that they truly can do that. Okay, let's talk about Miss Universe India. Still within the same category, so the girls that should use this moment to prove everyone wrong. Um, I feel like as of right now, the overall consensus about Miss Universe India is that she is, um, the potential is seen, is felt, so we have kind of embraced her. But let's not forget that just a couple of weeks ago when she was crowned, there was this whole narrative of her not being deserving, of her being too young, of the competition being rigged because of another fan favorite competing head-to-head -head against her in the national level. 
Uh, I honestly feel like Rhea has done great at Miss Universe in terms of the looks, uh, in terms of her performance, in terms of the way that she carries herself. She's very likable. She's very smart. Yes, sometimes she can be a little bit extra and the fans has, have pointed it out, you know, that sometimes she does a little bit too much, but this is something that can easily be toned down. So I don't want to feel like um, just because of that, she doesn't stand the chance to really go ahead and perform really well during preliminaries and ultimately obtain a position in the final cut during finals. Um, I know for a fact that this is a very beautiful, smart girl and she will maximize this opportunity. I'm kind of curious to see how she's going to come out in terms of the looks and the fashion and all of those things because uh, I don't see anything off in terms of personality or performance. So Really, I feel like the focus here should be put on the looks to make sure that she is able to stand out. And if the trend continues, I mean, um, this is a girl that comes from the same organization as the winning Miss Grand International. She should have access to great gowns and designers and all of those things. So hopefully she is able to make the most out of those connections. All right. I told you that I wanted to talk about Philippines. So let's talk about Chelsea. I mean, <laughs> all right. I said in the very beginning when I started covering Miss Universe, the international version of Miss Universe, I felt like the Filipino fans were not so on board with Chelsea in terms of hype, in terms of support. I felt like for previous years, they were just a little bit more engaged. Now, in fairness, at this particular time in the competition, at this point, I feel like the support has grown exponentially. A lot of people are showing up for Chelsea. They're supporting, they're sending love, they're rooting for her. I can see it reflected in the comments, in the live streams, in the engagement of the post um, on the Miss Universe page, the blogs, even on my content, to be honest. Um, so I feel like Chelsea has successfully gained back that momentum. Now, that's on a national level in the Philippines. When it comes to the international level, I still feel like Chelsea has a lot of ground to win in terms of kind of proving to the international fans that she has what it takes to make the top 30, potentially make the top 12, potentially make the top five. Um, if you followed closely Miss Universe Philippines, you know what this girl is capable of in terms of performance, going from being a dark horse at a national level to quite literally overperforming and overshadowing um, some of the fan favorites, not some, all of the fan favorites in the national competition, uh, even the veterans in the national competition. So we know that Chelsea is a girl that can be, um, can seem shy, quiet, soft, but the moment that she steps on stage, she gains that momentum. She, she grows basically, she takes space on stage. Well, for those who didn't follow the national competition, they don't know that because they have, never, they have never really seen her in motion. Even now at Miss Universe, this is truly the first time that Chelsea will have the opportunity to take the stage and walk in front of the cameras, the lights, judges, a live audience. So um, it's really a big opportunity for her. I hope that she's in the right mindset, that she's able to bring the A game when it comes to the performance and also in terms of the fashion. You know, for the past couple of years, sometimes the Filipino fans are not so fond of some of the fashion choices for the delegates, except maybe for last year, Michelle D just nailed it in every single round. But, you know, sometimes maybe if you look back at Celeste, if you look back, with, um, if you look back to Bea, you know, sometimes the fans are not so on board with the fashion choices. So I wonder how Chelsea is going to approach this and what type of look she's going to go for uh, when it comes to the preliminary competition. Now, let's talk about the girls um, who basically are putting everything at stake for the preliminary competition. And what I mean by this is, I told you before, some girls need to regain their momentum some girls need to prove everyone wrong and some girls have to prove that they truly deserve the hype. As of right now, there's a handful of girls and I'm going to um, go through them very quickly. So I have Miss Denmark, Thailand, South Africa, Peru, Dominican Republic and Venezuela. Basically, every single candidate that is considered to be a fan favorite or a front runner as of right now. Let's dig into it with Miss Denmark. 
I feel like the Miss Denmark is mostly on the dark horse side simply because she comes from a non sash factor country. She doesn't have this huge support system. However, with her looks, she has managed to really conquer the hearts of pageant fans from all over the world. I mean, they called her a Barbie. They're really crazy about her fashion. They're really crazy about so many things. But this is the moment of truth. You know, preliminaries, it's all about competition. Uh, it's all about performance. And the girls don't really get a chance to speak on stage. So if she is a great at communication skills, preliminary won't really give her an opportunity to showcase that. She needs to be able to walk and be up to the part, be up to the expectation basically of the pageant fans. Coming from a European country, this can be a little bit challenging to be honest. I'm not so sure what she's capable of in terms of performance, as in like, what does her walk look like? Is she fierce? Is she elegant? Is she a little bit clumsy? I don't know. So truly, that's why I'm saying that the preliminary, it's one of those like, uh, leave everything on the floor type of moment, like make or break type of deal, because as of right now, she has all this love and support and momentum. If she doesn't perform up to the expectation, she could easily lose it, right? Same thing for Thailand. I mean. The difference here is that Thailand, Miss Universe Thailand, comes from a pageant country. We have seen her perform already. We know that she is fierce, that she can deliver. She has the goodies. We know that, right? Uh, Opal has delivered uh, in terms of the looks, very consistent. Um, she is liked by pageant fans, not only here in Mexico, but also abroad. And that is reflected on the leaderboards and predictions and all of those things, because people truly feel like Opal is one of those girls that is deserving of the crown. So even up until now, she is a front runner and for many a fan favorite to win the entire competition. That's why preliminaries is going to be so important for her because she has to once again prove that she can match the hype and that she can um, basically deliver what is expected. We know that she can because we have seen it before on the national level, but this might be another scenario such as what happened last year with um, uh, Antonia Porcel, right? Where she did incredibly well at the national level and then when she went to the internationals, after prelims, she kind of, you know, her energy and her aura just went down. So this is something that Opal needs to be very careful of to make sure that um, that doesn't happen to her, right? This could really make or break her chances of winning. Miss Universe South Africa, Mia, I mean, South Africa is one of those pageant darling countries that everyone loves their delegates, that everyone knows that they're well prepared, they are uh, incredible speakers, they're smart, you know. Who doesn't watch Miss South Africa? Like, come on, let's get real. Mia is also, has a very interesting background and a story because she is the first deaf uh, contestant to participate at Miss Universe and to represent South Africa simultaneously. Um, and, you know, one of my concerns for Mia going into preliminaries, it's truly the performance side of things. Because up until now, and I still see it, Mia is a front runner. She's so smart. Her story is so incredible. I feel like Miss Universe could really benefit from um, what she brings to the table. However, as I said earlier, preliminaries won't really give you a chance to express yourself. It's all about performance and performance only. And even if you look back at my videos about Miss South Africa this year, I, I said it that basically one of the um, things that the national pageant system doesn't focus on so much is the performance. They don't really work so much on the walk. They don't really focus so much on the technicalities. And yes, once they have their title holder, they polish them and send them internationally. But we haven't seen it yet. We don't know what to expect from Mia. So that's why prelims is going to be such an important moment for her because she she has this incredible story. She's so inspiring. She is so well spoken, you know. But now we are basically discovering her performance skills for the very first time. And this could go incredibly well or incredibly wrong. That's why Mia, I'm sending you all the love and positive energy because this is literally it. <laughs> right? Um, I will put together Peru and Dominican Republic. I, I don't have to explain too much why this is important for them. These are very loved girls with very strong support system in their respective countries. They are pageant veterans because they have competed before in another 
major pageant, which is Miss International. Both of them ended within the top five. So they have to live up to the expectation, not only of the hype that they currently have, but also up to the expectation of the legacy that they're carrying with themselves. Um, Miss Peru, in a lot of ways, was considered to be the front runner, you know, in the very early stages of the competition. I feel like she has done a good job at maintaining that. Uh, Miss Dominican Republic, also, she start. I mean, undeniably, she has a very strong support system. People love her. People see it for her. I personally see her mostly in the top twelve side, side of things. But you know, prelims is one of those make or break type of moment um, for both of them. So I feel like if Dominican Republic brings her A game. Um, nothing is lost. She could potentially go to a top five. She could potentially win the crown. We never know. But it's all going to depend of what happens in a couple of hours. And last but not least, the, the girl that I wanted to highlight basically is Venezuela. It is no secret that Venezuela, I mean, one of the biggest pageant countries in the world, such an incredible gold track record. Uh, Iliana is a fan favorite. She is, she embodies the Miss Universe prototype. She is a mother. She is intelligent, well-spoken, so many things. I feel like Iliana has everything going on for herself. Um, so it's kind of a challenge because this could literally be the moment that she needs to live up to the expectation. And I feel like out of all of the delegates, she is the one that has the most pressure, not only because she is kind of a perfect match for the Miss Universe crown, but also because she has such a big and demanding fan base behind her. Venezuelans are known for loving and supporting their queens, but they will also expect nothing less than excellence. So going into this, I hope that she is prepared in the right mindset. I am sure that she can take it. I'm sure that she has what it takes to, you know, just over deliver tonight. But yeah, I feel like uh, it's one of those moments that will tell us whether or not she is the one. So I guess that kind of summarizes it for me. Honestly, I'm very proud that I was able to just sit down and do this video in one take. No mistakes, no cuts, no edits. I don't feel like I have to add many photos or anything on this video because you guys are very familiar with the delegates and I simply just wanted to share my thoughts on you know where they are and what the preliminary competition represents for them. I'm aware that there are so many other delegates that we can talk about. As I said, there are 127 delegates this year. I cannot take the time of the day to talk about every single one of them. So I'm just sharing my thoughts about those that I think um, this could be like a major moment leading towards finals, right? Whether they have to regain their moment, whether they have to prove somebody wrong, or whether they're risking everything going into prelims. Let me know down below who do you um, who are you rooting for? What do you feel about? Uh, how do you feel about my comments? My different segments, I guess. And if there is a country that you wanted me to look into, let me know down below, and maybe I can you know add a few words and reply to a couple of you guys. Thank you for watching, and see you soon. Enjoy prelims, and let's do a recap right after. Okay, bye now. <laughs>